To the very first story, Energy Minister John Peter Amewu says government is reviewing the Ameri Power deal with a focus on getting capacity charges reduced. Speaking at a press briefing, Mr. Amewu reviewed the Energy Commission Committee that reviewed 26 out of 30 power pages agreements signed by the ECG under the Mahama administration is recommending that government terminate 11 of them. He said government is forced to pay an amount in excess of $50 million for power that is not needed because of excess installed capacity. He's described the agreement signed by the Mahama administration as reckless since it's forcing government to pay for what is not needed. Now, it will cost the country $402 million to terminate the 11 agreements, but it will cost government $586 million yearly to stick to these deals. He added tariffs would have been lower if deals that have resulted in excess installed capacity were not signed. Medium to explain what a take or pay means. The 7,838 that we talked about on take or pay basis simply means that there's an element of socialization cost to poor Ghanaians who do not even consume the power. The contract simply means that whether you consume that power or not, you will have to pay. And as you see here today, the government led by His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado government is paying quite close to $15 million every single month as a result of these reckless PPAs that have been signed and left by Mahama-led administration. This is a rationale for some high element of tariff that we are paying. If the excess capacity is taken out from your tariff, you will be paying far less than what Ghanaians are enjoying today. The review, ladies and gentlemen, noted that the projected capacity additions from the PPAs were far in excess of the required additions, including even the 20% system margin that is allowed from 2018 to 2030, and will result in payment of capacity charges for the dispatch of the plant, I have, as I've already stated. The review recommended the following. Eight PPAs were com with combined capacity of 2,070 are to proceed without modification. Four PPAs with combined capacity of 1,800 be deferred to 2018, between 2018 and 2025. Three PPAs with a combined capacity of 1,150 megawatts be deferred beyond 2025. And 11 PPAs with a combined capacity of 2,800 megawatts be terminated. As a result of the review exercise, government stands to make significant savings from the deferment or the terminations of the review of the PPAs. The estimated cost for the terminations amounting to almost 402 million US dollars, compared to an average annual capacity cost of 586 million each year, or a cumulative cost of 7.2 billion US dollars from 2018 to 2030. This yields an estimated savings of 6.8 billion over the 13 year period. Tariff reduction. Ladies and gentlemen, upon assuming office in 2017, the government of Ghana, led by His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, was confronted with unfriendly investment climate arising from high cost of energy to industry and residential consumers. The high cost of power, particularly for industrial customers, had serious implications leading to shutdown of businesses and laying out of workers. Many electricity customers also resorted to self-generation, which resulted in artificial reductions in demand for electricity and therefore reducing ECG sales volume and its financial sustainability. This was due to the fact that 600 kilowatt hour, the tariff, were over 40 US cents per kilowatt hour. What it means is that if you go beyond that, you are in the margin of paying 40 US kilowatts, you know, 40 US cents per kilowatt hour. In fulfillment of our manifesto promise, to reduce the electricity tariff drastically, government made submissions to PRC 
for tariff review based on the various interventions made in the energy sector. The objectives of the tariff reductions were therefore to provide relief to electricity customers, stimulate demand, and spare economic growth and create job opportunities for our youth. Consequently, the PRC announced significant reductions in tariff effective March 15, 2018 as follows. Industrial customers, 30%. Residential customers, 17%. Mining sector, 10%. Special load tariff customers, 25%. Ladies and gentlemen and the good people of Ghana, what the implication of this tariff reduction will be doing now is the fact that if the Mahama-led administration is still in power, consumers that are related to residential consumers today will be paying 18% more than what they are paying. The mining sector will be paying 10% more than they are paying, and the special low tariff customers will be paying 25% more than they are paying. The industrial customers, which are supposed to create the employment opportunity for Ghanaians, will be paying 30% more than what they are paying today. The reduction in tariffs were influenced by a number of interventions by government in the energy sector, including the following. One, renegotiations of the PPAs on cost of generation, recalibrations of domestic gas price, and revenue requirement of utilities based on updated customer populations. If the need for this government calls for the fact that PPAs could be reduced in terms of their capacity charge, charges that were contracted can therefore be reduced under the MPP administration. What stops the Mahama led administration from doing that? Do they care for the good people of this country? I am glad to announce that the reduction in electricity tariff has brought enormous relief to the electricity customers, particularly industry. Commercial customers such as manufacturers, tailors, hairdressers, and traders. This is expected also to spare the economic growth and create jobs which would have otherwise been lost. Emergency power plants. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, during the power crisis of between 2013 and 2016, the then Mahama led administration signed a number of emergency power plants including the car power plants, the popularly called plants known as the Ameri, the AXAC plants, so on and so forth. Government is currently reviewing the status of these emergency plants with a view to determine the implications of their continuous operation. And I can assure you all gathered here that under His Excellency Nana Adudankwa Akufuado's government, value for money, Reconciliations on cost basis will be taken into consideration in this review process. And His Excellency has directed that the benefit of the reductions in capacity charges of these plants must be transferred to the good people of this country. And that will be done as quickly as possible. For car power, ladies and gentlemen, government has taken the decision to continue the use of the plant for strategic reasons. Following the signing of the commercial agreement to develop the OCTP field in 2015, the then government has failed to put adequate measures to create demand for the domestic gas to be produced from the field. At the time, the government agreed to a take or pay arrangement of up to 154 million metric standard cubic feet of gas. In the absence of the infrastructure to evacuate <laughs> gas to the power enclave in Tema and inadequate demand for gas in Takradi, GMPC will be confronted with a huge bill of 40 million US dollars every month for gas not consumed. Again, if the Mahama led administration is in power today and the car power plant is left in Tema, the people of this country will be paying 40 million Ghana dollars as a result of reckless decisions that they make in positioning a car power in Tema when gas is stranded in Takradi. How can you take this decision? knowing very well that there's going to be a gas production from Takradi, in your relocation problem of planting of power plant, you take a power plant that is supposed to be nearer the source of feed and go and put it in Tema. What was the reason? What triggered the decisions to put the power plant in Tema? 
the good people of Ghana must begin to ask this relevant question. Faced with these challenges, the government, again under His Excellency, has decided to locate the car power plant to Takradi and to convert it into gas plant. If the ND MPP administration has seen the rationale of relocation of the gas power plant to avoid the people of this country from paying $40 million, what stopped the Mahama led administration from doing the same? These people don't care for you. The government is reviewing the other emergency power plants and we will announce the benefit to the good people of this country very soon. The petroleum sector. Ladies and gentlemen, with regard to the OCTP fuel development, I am happy to note that the main project has been successfully completed and gas has been flowing from the fuel since July this year. I would like to state, however, that some of the genuine concerns expressed by the MPP at the time we were in opposition, we, as a party in government today, have been vindicated. We were more concerned, if you all rec recognize and realize during the campaign period, that there was no single plan put in place to provide infrastructure for evacuating the gas to be produced to the demand centers, including Tema Power and Tema Power and its industrial enclave, which was going to leave gas stranded, as I've already stated earlier on, in Takradi. We are also worried then about the high gas price negotiated by the previous government. This was very clear. The media, the little child, the 18 years, the 15 years, the six years, were all therefore concerned about the seven billion investment of that particular project. To date, we have made significant interventions under His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado and have addressed some of these major concerns. River flow project to prevent gas from being stranded in Takrari, wise power plants in Tema lack cheaper gas as an alternative fuel. <coughs> government has decided to undertake a project that will allow gas to reverse from Takrari to Tema to the West Africa gas pipeline. The project is expected to be completed by November this year. This project has become necessary because at the time the commercial contracts for development of the OCTP gas were signed in 2015, there was no plan to fully utilize the gas to be produced, although we were committed to take or pay obligations as I have stated earlier on. This will ensure that the excess gas in Chakradi now it's transported to Tema for power generation as well as other industrial uses. Government is again working with the OCT partners and other relevant stakeholders to execute the outstanding commercial agreement between the parties for the entire project to be completed on time. Meanwhile, ahead of the reverse flow, the partners have agreed to construct a bypass facility to evacuate gas to Tema and reduce the surplus in Takradi. The construction of the bypass facility is being finalized to allow for gas to flow. This is a responsible government. This thing can be done by every government that takes this country into a very high level of some seriousness. If we have been considered as Ghanaians, this benefit would have been done three years ago. The price of gas, as you all recollect, and the contract of $7 billion signed by Mahama-led administration of, between the government of Ghana and then the OCT partners at that time was 9.8 MMBTU. MMBTU is a British thermal unit. It's a unit that is used in measuring <coughs> gas. Although a domestic gas, our own gas that we are producing from Takradi, our own gas that we're producing from our land, the price of that gas was then signed by Mahama higher than a gas that we are importing from Nigeria. Why is Mahama signed a gas price of 9.8? Our own gas that we produce, we were then buying gas from Nigeria at 8.4. Who cares for this country? His Excellency Nana Adodanko Akufuado charged the ministry that we must go into that and make sure that Ghanaians benefit from their own gas. The MPP government have found this unacceptable and sought a renegotiation of the gas price 
on account of savings made from the project cost, initially estimated at $7 billion. I am happy and extremely excited, as I sit before you today, to announce that the government under His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuaro has once again renegotiated the headline gas price to 7.89 mm BTU. This gives the country a bulk gas customers a savings of almost about $2 on every MMM BTU of gas purchase, which translates into several billions of US dollars. What this means is that if you estimate the volume of gas to be produced from the OCT partners field, that volume of gas multiplied by $2 per MMM BTU is the savings His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Kufaro has given to Ghanaians. Why can't this be done by the previous administration? Do they really care for you guys? Ladies and gentlemen, to recover more from oil from the fields, government has approved an amendment of plan of development for an integrated OCTP oil and gas project. This also paves way for the OCTP partners to continue to evacuate, to continue to evaluate the company's reservoirs with a review to submitting in the coming weeks options on how to develop and produce the company's reservoirs as part of the overall OCTP integrated oil and gas project. It will also ensure that an incremental upstream value of 2.4 billion US dollars in cash flow is created to be shared among the parties. This enhances the states, including GMPC's net expected benefit on present value basis. Also, since the original plan of development was based on 2010 data, which may have resulted in less than expected oil recovery rate, the partners have committed to use an updated reservoir model based on a new seismic data acquired in 2016-2017 and more extensive production data in activities under the amended POD. The new reservoir model has confirmed that activities to be carried out within the amended POD will sustain the oil production and recover more from the reserves. Government wishes to express our satisfaction with the high level of cooperation and collaborations between the partners. We applaud the commitment of partners to achieving success stories in the OCTP project for our mutual benefit. Petroleum product prices. Ladies and gentlemen, the issue of petroleum product prices has extensively been discussed this week in the media and in the landscape. I want to use this opportunity to congratulate the media for such a criticism and broad discussions on issue of national interest. First and foremost, it is important that we as Ghanaians might begin to acquaint ourselves with factors and facts accounting for driving the current global prices of petroleum products. Number one, the oil producing countries known as OPEC and then the non-oil producing countries known as the non-OPEC agreements were made to cut global production to drive prices up. What it means is that these two countries have come together and decided to cut short supply. If they cut short in supply, what does that mean? Demand will be chasing fewer goods and this automatically pushes the price up. So the crude oil price and the crude which is refined to get the petroleum product that we are enjoying here, the price of that crude internationally had gone up. The only product that traded internationally and is the only internationally product that is traded globally is the crude. So anything that affects that product internationally is supposed to cut across the world. So the short in supply in terms of this product currently has triggered the movement of the price up. As I speak today, Brent is trading about how much? 70 what? 78. Moving from as low as 75, 76 to 78. There is an increase of almost about 3 to $2 on every barrel of the crude that we extract from the ground. That is number one. Number two, and this decision, you cannot control it. As you know, OPEC and non-OPEC countries, they are the major players in, the, in, in this industry. So you cannot control their movement. The second decision, again, is as a result of the decision by the U.S. to reinstate economic sanctions on Iran. 
Iran is one of the major producing countries when we talk about oil. The sanctions of U.S. on Iran simply means that oil produced from the Iranian market can again not be brought, you know, to the international market. So that also reduces the supply in the market. The National Petroleum Authority plays a supervisory role by determining the price benchmark and ensuring that the BDCs, the BDCs are simple, the bulk distribution companies, and the OMCs, the oil marketing companies, set their prices in accordance with the prescribed petroleum price formula, which is based on the components of the import parity mechanisms mentioned above. The MPAs review the indicative price submitted by each BDC and OMC for every pricing window to ensure that the realistic prices are set by BDCs and OMCs and to ensure consumers are not taken advantage of in a deregulated market. In a market like Ghana that we are witnessing today, it is deregulated. The deregulation simply means that the forces of supply and demand are allowed to work on their own and that there is no regulator on each decision can fix a simple price for that market. It has its own positive and it has its own negative. But the world at large throughout every emerging to an emerged economy is moving from a regulated market to a deregulated market. So Ghana cannot be left out in this decision making. It is worthy to note that the price deregulation has led to keen competitions among petroleum pr pr uh, price service produ producers, thereby keeping prices very competitive. Ghana, ladies and gentlemen, is a net exporter of oil. However, it must be noted that the government receives from oil export is not the entire total oil export earnings. Get it clear. There's a lot of misconception going out there. And I want good peoples of this country, our MPs, our opposition leaders, our external forces, developers, friends of the media, to take note of this. Ghana is a net exporter of oil. However, it must be noted that government receipts from oil export is not the entire total oil export earnings. It is limited to government share of oil or gas as prescribed in the petroleum agreement signed between the government of Ghana and then the OICs. Even though we are a net exporter of oil, what it means is that if you lift 100 barrels of oil and sell at 10 Ghana cities or $10, all that amount of money do not come to Ghana or will not come to Ghana. The amount of money that comes to Ghana is Ghana's participation in that 100 barrels of oil. So if Ghana is participating 10% and you lift 100 barrels of oil, what comes to Ghana is 10 barrels of oil. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, my good friend in the position, it's time you take note of this. <clears throat> Petroleum Revenue Management Act 2011, Act 815, prescribes how government spend is received from exports of crude oil. So even if we have that percent of the money coming to it as a country, there is a modality, there is a system of expenditure, there is a pattern to which we must spend that money. And that pattern, as Ghanaians, we all agree that there must be a law binding the expenditure pattern and those laws are enshrined in our Petroleum Revenue Management Act. So you can't just go and take the money and spend. And I expect most of our people to take note of this. Government intervention so far in the petroleum prices. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, government has used tax interventions to mitigate the impact of domestic petroleum product price increases. The following are the various tax interventions implemented by the government of His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado since 2017 to August 2018. Please listen to this carefully. If this can be done by the MPP government, it could be done by anybody. Why has the government led by His Excellency then, John Mahama, refused to remove the excise duty on petroleum products? His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado removed the, ex the petroleum duty on excise products on the 16th of March, 2017. It is clear, and every Ghanaian is aware of this. Why has His Excellency 
The government, led by John Mahama, refused to take out the special petroleum tax rate from 17% downwards. Why did he refuse to do that? His Excellency, under the current government, Nana Adodankwa Akufuadu, have reduced the petroleum special tax levy from 17.5% to 15.5% on the 16th of March, 2017. Has His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuadu been able to reduce the special petroleum tax rate further from 15% downwards? Yes, again, he did that and been able to reduce it from 15% to 13%. What it means is that within that period, less than two years that we've been in government, the government of MPP have reduced that margin from 17.5% 17 to 13.5%. Convention of special tax from ad valerium to specific tax on 16th of February 2018. This again was another major relief done by this government. Reductions of price stabilization and recovery levies from 1st December 2017. Currently, the price stabilization levy has been reduced from 12 Ghana pesos per liter to zero for petroleum products and 10 Ghana pesos per liter to zero for diesel and finally 10 kilogram 10 Ghana pesos per kilogram to 3 Ghana pesos per kilogram for LPG. These have been very extensive reductions in prices of petroleum products within the period so far that we've been in government. The revenue loss, ladies and gentlemen, to government on the removal of the excise duty and the reductions of the petroleum levy alone between December 2017 and June 2018 amounts to 232 million U.S. million Ghana cities. These are benefits that this government has given to Ghanaians. The impact of tax interventions on petroleum pricing. Due to government tax interventions and the current prices of both petrol and diesel, petrol and diesels are selling currently at 5 cities, 12 pesos per liter, per liter. The prices for the previous window was 4 cities, 90 Pesos per liter for petrol and 4 cities 94 pesos for diesel. This represents a change in price from the previous window by 4.49% for petrol and 3.64% for diesel. Without government intervention, as I've stated earlier, prices today would have been 5.54 per liter for petrol and 5.55 per liter for diesel. So what means is that the price we are paying today, if the Mahama-led administration is still in force, you will be paying quite close to 9, between 9 to 10 percent higher than the current prices that Ghanaians are paying. I think in time, we give this government the recognition for caring for the people of this country. The significance of government tax reduction can be judged from the fact that the total component of taxes levies and margin the export prices of petroleum products reduced from 40 percent in March 2017 after MPP government came into office to a current 26 percent. So a reduction of 40 percent to 26 percent in terms of those taxes and levies. Notwithstanding this intervention, the international market conditions have weighed strongly against domestic prices of petroleum products as international crude oil prices continue to increase and currently estimated at $78 per barrel. Therefore, apart from the applications of the price stabilization and recovery fund to cushion customers or consumers, government has made progress in its effort at securing a government-to-government -government oil supply arrangement to address the supply side factors of petroleum products. We are hopeful that this and many other measures that are put in place by our only own marketing company, Goyal, in a we are hopeful that this and other measures that government has put in place in collaboration with Goyal would, in the short to medium time, begin to stabilize prices as we move into the foreseeable future. Bulk Oil Storage and Transportation Company, BOST, 
over the period you've heard buzz, buzz, buzz on the news. Since 2013, buzz, as you are all aware, was faced with serious financial crisis due to mounting debt and financial indiscipline. The accumulations of some of this debt arose as a result of failure of the then government policies that they have instituted. This particularly arose from the inappropriate measure between two heavily indebted companies, Tor and Boss. You will recollect that these two companies were put under one umbrella. The two companies had the same managing director leading to breakdown of corporate governance procedures. This development also exposed capacity limitations on part of Boss at its low trading skills and expertise presented demonstrable weakness. A presidential committee, therefore, was tasked to establish the financial position of BOST, recently presented its report, which found inappropriate decisions and actions involving BOST transactions. Financial indiscipline, recklessness to be responsible for the poor states of the company's finances and financial losses. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me just to mention some few of the findings. Number one. And profitable tolling arrangement of $5.5 per metric ton with the Tema Oil Refinery Limited. Between 2015 and 2016, Boss entered into a tolling arrangement with Tema Oil Refinery in which the refinery was to process crude oil on behalf of Boss at a fee. As per the management arrangement, Boss procures its own crude oil shift it to the refinery for processing into refined petroleum products, example, gasoline, gas oil, LPG, ATK, etc., etc. Et Both then on sales the product to the domestic and export market. The tolling fee of $5.5 per metric ton was on the high side compared to the international average tolling fee of 3.5 metric ton. What means is that both within Boss and Tor, they're trying to do some form of transfer pricing. Because it's the same company, if you want to get money from this source, you raise the, high, the, the money and it goes to, uh, to, to Tor. Why was this done? Because comparatively, the price that was paid, 5.5, was far lower, far higher, excuse me, than what was prevailing internationally in the market. Additionally, it was noted that the crude oil was also imported at a higher premium. Whilst premium were ranging between one to two, Boss was doing a premium far in excess of 4.5, sometimes amounting as high as $5 per barrel. So while the international premium for such a transaction is about between one and two dollars, we were doing it at five dollars. I mean, how can we be doing this service to our own country? Another issue has to do with lower than expected yields from proceeds of crude oil. During the tolling arrangement with Tor, the yield receipts from the proceeds of crude oil were lower than expected, thereby the sales or the gross wealth from the refined product was far less than the cost of crude oil purchase. Both will therefore face serious debt in terms of losses they incur from this transaction. Some receivable used to pay Door. some receivable used to pay tall debts with traders. Because of the BOST and the tall alliances, some traders dealing within BOST were deducting some of the tall old liabilities from the proceeds of the export BOST undertook during the period. Trade losses resulting from under-recovery. BOST had a take-or-pay arrangement with Trafigura and other traders which far exceed BOS capacity to sell to the market. Therefore, in times of price drops, BOS incur far more losses because it always held higher stock of petroleum products in storage facilities, creating under recoveries. Number five, repayment of existing loans from trade receivables. BOS again was repaying most of its loans from their trade receivables. Therefore, funds expected to be used for payment of product purchases were used to repay loans. And finally, both overheads were paid from trade receivables due to insufficient funds from both margin. About 60% of the funds from both margin payments were pledged for the repayment of standard chartered bank loan. 
Therefore, BOSS was using part of its trade receivable to fund its daily operations overhead costs of almost 300 million per annum. <coughs> These situations create a lot of holes in the trade receivables within BOSS. The recent payment to Springfield Energy Limited by BOSS is one of the many, many, many claims made by 16 BDCs to BOSS to product losses occurring from between 2013 to 2016, as reported by the committee. The total claim on BOSS in respect of product losses by BDCs amount to 44 million US dollars. The causes of such product losses must be established to determine the records of storage of these products. Those responsible for loading the products, the financial receipt in respect of the products, and the utilizations of the funds. The government of Ghana, under His Excellency Nana Rudakwa Akufado, has decided that given the extent of financial recklessness found by the committee, an audit will be commissioned into the boss operations between 2013 to 2018. This will ensure that persons against whom adverse findings will be made will, of course, face the full rigors of the law. The audit will also provide recommendations for restructuring of boss management, operations, and financial management. Full details of the findings are expected to be received by the end of October as board, the board informed in the statement yesterday. If you recollect, yesterday, the board of BOSS came out with a very, very educative, you know, uh, statement about their intention for the future. And I think we should give them that opportunity to see what comes out by the end of October. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, my good friends, Novinja de Kakuyokli de Tubio, on this note, I want to say a very big thanks to you. The media has been very helpful in this government. I acknowledge your recent upsurge in petroleum pricing, but I think it's also proper that as media, you must also begin to underline and explain to good people of this country why some of these things are happening. Today, as I speak, the pound and the dollar are apart. They are chasing each other. The strength of the dollar has become very, very strong because of some of the policy measures being initiated by Donald Trump. And so if that is happening, these are global things. We as an emerging country like Ghana, are equally supposed to face the same world. So I expect you to criticize. I expect you to bring out issues of this nature that you've done over the period. But let us also do it with some high level of understanding of the procedure. It baffles me. And sometimes I sit down and laugh when people of high level of expectation comes out to make argument that Ghana is a net exporter of petroleum products use the difference to take charge of the increase in prices. On that note, I want to say mm -hmm. thank you for all. So I'm going to take you some 10 minutes of questions. Okay. Limited to just this. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you had the Energy Minister, John Peter Amewu, there. This is first uh, public address since he took over as Energy Minister uh, Mr. Mr. Boachi Jakun was dismissed by the president. He's been talking basically about development in the energy sector, uh, particularly talking about government's decision to review the Ameri deal has been, uh, we would like to say, confirmed now. And also talking about uh, the recent one on the increase in fuel prices. Uh, and he believes that Ghanaians must acquaint themselves with happenings uh, on the world market or in the global space that's driving the cost of fuel prices high. We'll bring you a lot of analysis here on the Joy News channel on this submission by the Energy Minister. He did talk about some readjustments to power purchase agreements made in the previous uh, administration. And if you listen from the beginning, he kept making reference to some uh, arrangements made under former President Mahama's uh, government that he thinks did not inure to the benefit of Ghanaians. Stay with us here on the Joy News channel as we bring you analysis on this and more in subsequent bulletins. But I